200 passengers on board, five doctors, and one sick child. This is the story of what happened in the Stara UK 814 Bangalore to Delhi flight on 27th August 2023 at 9 p.m. Now I am Dr. Rishab Chand. This is my wife, Dr. Oishika Chakraborty, and we happen to be among the two doctors out of the five who were on that plane that night. Very few professions, I think, give you that self gratification of saving a life, and especially twenty、uh, thousand feet above the ground on a moving plane when there is no doctor on board with the limited equipments that you have. And so, in this video, I basically want to tell you、uh, how, what exactly were the events that happened, how, along with our colleagues,、uh, all five of us、uh, managed to save. Uh, a 1.5, a、uh, one year and five month old、uh, girl child on board that day, and、uh, how it really should encourage, motivate others pursuing this profession and those who want to pursue this profession. That yes, it is a noble profession, and、uh, yes, if you put in some effort, you can actually save the life of a child. So、uh, it was. Sunday night around 9 p.m. the flight was scheduled to take off at 9:10 p.m. from Bangalore Airport and was headed to Delhi. It was UK Vistara、uh, 814. And once the flight took off,、uh, the captain announced that we are on board. The cabin crew started serving dinner. And at around 9:30, 9:30 p.m.,、uh, there was a distress call that was raised on the airplane by the parents. Now the cabin crew immediately rushed to the、uh, parents and announced on the flight, "Are there any doctors on board?" Now the five of us were doctors. I think Oishka heard the distress call first, and she quickly responded. So Oishka, let's hear from you. What happened? What did you see? Uh, I uh, followed the cabin crew towards、uh, the rear end of the plane, where usually they sit and they arrange the food. And I asked them, "Where is the patient?" I was looking for a patient. I could not see any. And then they pointed to, you know, like this lady carrying a tiny limb form. And I really did not expect it to be a child. I immediately took、uh, the baby from the mother, and、uh, the baby was absolutely unresponsive limb.、Uh, I tried to feel for a carotid. I could not feel a pulse. So、uh, I immediately laid the baby down on the floor and asked、uh, the crew if they had any medical supplies, any stethoscope, and started the chest compressions. Right. So at that point,、uh, all four of us who were still there in the aboard,、uh, we also jumped in. We also went to the back of the airplane, and we saw、uh, Dr. Oishika uh, managing and uh, 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 investigating and you know examining the child. What has actually happened? And as she rightly said, that the patient had the child、uh, had a cardiac arrest, and、uh, so initially the、uh, immediately the chest compressions were started, and the cabin crew provided us with the medical equipment that they have, so they have. First aid kit on board. Yeah. In case of medical emergency, then hats off to the airlines for having one. And that medical、uh, kit was mostly catered,、uh, mostly made according to an adult emergency. Yeah. In case of an adult emergency, so you can expect expect an adult size ambu bag and an adult size mask, mostly adult cannulas and adult endotracheal tube, etc., etc. Now, luckily, that、uh, medical kit did have a pediatric size IV cannula. So in medical terms, we the pediatric size starts from、uh, yellow cannula onwards. So it was a yellow cannula that they had, and、uh, also they had a pediatric size oropharyngeal airway. Now, if someone of、uh, some of you know what an oropharyngeal airway is, it is used to、uh, prevent the tongue from falling backwards. So these were the only pediatric equipments that were available, and with the limited equipment that we had, we started with what we knew. Uh, chest compression was started.、Uh, Navdeep, Navdeep, being an anesthesiologist, she assumed the role of a team leader and、uh, maintained the airway. Put the bag and mask. Started uh, giving uh, airway air to the child. I started doing chest compressions, and somebody took the started taking medical history from the parents.、Uh, we found out that the child had a congenital heart disease. So the child had a TAPVC. Now some of you might know what a TAPVC is. For those of you who don't, it stands for total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Basically, all the oxygenated blood 
that is coming from your lungs goes to the right side of the heart and hence it mixes with the deoxygenated blood in the body and hence the child turns blue now the patient had a heart surgery for this in bangalore had a heart surgery uh, 20 days ago and was flying back to delhi uh, and this is when this uh, incident happened but you know these things you cannot predict uh, especially for a cardiac patients uh, these things you cannot predict and unfortunately this incident happened and uh, whatever the equipments we had on the board we started doing with that so once the iv line was established uh, one of us was making drugs or with whatever whatever available drugs they had so they had adrenaline atropine and some other important drugs with them so dr avishala started preparing drugs uh, there was an oxygen line which was present in the uh, aircraft so there was an oxygen cylinder also and an oxygen line along with it which was not fitting into the uh, ambu bag uh, so dr damandi started improvising it uh, slitting slitting it vertically so that it becomes widened and get attached to the ambu bag meanwhile uh, oishika and i were alternating in compressions damandeep and i sometimes were alternating in chest compressions and uh, meanwhile oishika also talked to the cabin crew so what did you talk to the cabin crew oishika uh, so from our assessment of the situation uh, this baby was very critical and not just this baby any person who is undergoing uh, you know uh, cpr will uh, require hospitalization and uh, specifically icu care in the post op period uh, and uh, this baby was uh, it was quite sick it was a sick baby and uh, we managed to resuscitate the baby but despite the resuscitation where this uh, baby she went into arrest twice uh, later despite the resuscitation uh so we quickly assessed that uh, we needed to land the plane the flight had only just started we were only maybe 45 minutes into the flight and uh, we had another 2 uh, hours, two to, hours go. to go and we did not have that kind of time so we i talked to the pilot regarding this and we asked what our nearest destination what were our options right. where we could land right. and we were given two options of uh, nagpur and mumbai and uh, nagpur uh, being the closer of the two with that was only around 15 minutes away the pilot assured us he could get us there in 15 minutes mumbai however would uh, take near about half an hour and we decided it was more important to you know get to the ground uh, and you know get the baby in a hospital because uh, like krishap said we did not uh, have an endotracheal tube of the pediatric size we did not have any monitors we did not know how effective uh, uh, exactly uh, our resuscitation was and basically uh, there was more to be desired with respect to equipment and uh, that was only possible once we got uh, the baby on the ground right so we talked to the parents and uh, this decision was reached uh, very quickly with the parents uh, because obviously we know bombay would uh, have more advanced uh, facilities Sleepy. but, uh, but uh, the being a, yes, a good city it uh, was a good city and uh, at that time the priority was to basically get the baby to the nearest hospital, hospital. possible right. and we reached a compromise when we landed in nagpur Nahpur. yeah so at that point uh, something that i realized was that as a doctor we have a big responsibility of uh, telling the both the parents as well as the cabin crew and the pilot of what is needed because you know there are 200 passengers on are on board mm. and they are flying to delhi mm. and they are they have their families to mm. go back to and also for the airlines it's not economically feasible to route the plane to a new destination and there are explanations that the airlines has to give but amongst all this uh, i really like to appreciate the crew the uh, pilot and uh, the parents and all the other passengers all the passengers, passengers as well yeah. that everybody was on board that there is this 15 months old child and she needs to live you know and that is like the most important thing right now 20000 feet in the air and that is something that you can do as a doctor like convince uh, your non medicals your uh, passengers your other uh, citizens that look this is something that needs to be done and a decision was quickly uh, reached that yes we are na- landing in nagpur the captain informed the nagpur airport authorities that yes we are hand- we are dealing with a uh, sick child and we would need an ambulance uh, once we land there and so at the time of landing yeah so before the landing started the child was resuscitated on air once 
and uh, the child had a pulse i could feel the pulse in the there brain was a return of circulation, circulation. and uh, even on stethoscope the, the pulse could be felt even on stethoscope the baby had achieved a heart rate of around 140 beats per minute uh and uh, no we 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 heaved the sigh of relief for yeah. momentarily yeah that uh, finally that uh, our efforts have taken fruit and finally this baby is taking uh, he's he's having a circulation he's having a she's having a pulse but uh, we realized soon that at the time of landing and uh, this is something we discussed also that, that is a critical stage and uh, both for the passengers both for the doctors that we are and as a patient also that while the plane lands there is some turbulence and that might uh, affect our resuscitation efforts and unfortunately that happened that when the plane landed uh, the circulation again stopped the child again went into cardiac arrest and we again started cpr and uh, i think navdeep was on the bag and mask and i was doing chest compressions and the rest of the team were like clearing everybody out that yes we have finally and finally landed and there is an ambulance waiting outside just outside the airplane uh, waiting for us so quickly we took the child while performing cpr on the way and in the ambulance luckily it was better equipped than the aircraft definitely there were cardiac monitors on board uh, there were uh, pediatric size oxygen mask and a better oxygen supply than the board itself than the aircraft itself and so the child again revived on this ambulance and uh, we again took a sigh of relief and to our happiness and fortunately that kept steady for a while the child's vitals were stable uh, on the ambulance and uh, but we needed to make sure that the child is reached to the hospital safely before before the aircraft again takes off so another ambulance <coughs> from an associated hospital of the airport was called in and they had a trained staff they had a pediatric size endotracheal tube and soon that ambulance arrived the child was intubated the tube was put inside the child's trachea and an airway was secured and the child was uh, transferred to the nearest hospital that time we all boarded the flight again like really relieved really happy and i would say really satisfied with our profession and our medical career i would say like 11 years of medical training my 11 years of medical training starting from mbbs to md to assistantship to now fellowship and giving like innumerable exams on the way you know yeah. one of the toughest exams medical uh, graduation medical medicals give in this country and at that moment i felt like yes uh, whatever you do this is what you're doing it for like it is at that time but when everything made sense and vishika talked to the parents uh, of the child before seeing them off and uh, vishika can you tell me uh, about that uh, yeah it was very Doesn't it was over- very gut wrenching it was very overwhelming because uh, it, it's a very difficult situation for any set of parents and this is uh, no less this is a baby uh who has a lot of hopes riding on her she's already had a surgery she's already had to fight a lot in life and you know finally the parents are thinking okay now she is in the clear we have gotten her surgery done and now we are taking her back home and this happens right and uh, this is uh, i cannot even begin to imagine how gut wrenching it was for them at the time that we started the resuscitation they were distraught understandably right. but uh, they uh, looked visibly relieved that at least you know we are able to get the baby to a hospital now and they thanked us and uh, we like we are really rooting for this baby she yeah. is still sick she's still in the hospital she's still on ventilatory support and uh, like we really hope that the child yeah. makes it and uh, for all the you know all the <coughs> medical aspirants uh, all the mbbs students and even residents i would say who are pursuing residency like this is something that uh, really motivates you to keep moving forward like among all among all the negativity that might be around you might be around the profession keep doing what you are doing mm-hmm. like you know at the end you are making a difference to someone's life maybe whatever happens to the baby uh, we did give a good chance fighting for chance. It, fighting chance to yeah. her to fight back and you know that is what matters like all you can do is put in your best efforts yeah. at the place where you are with the resources that, that you are given yeah. you know you cannot uh, cry and even at challenge and you cannot doubt that oh i cannot do this but you have to make do with whatever you have and put in the best efforts and i think that is what matters
in the last 11 to 12 years that i have been in this profession i have uh, you know there have been a lot of times that i have felt that i am in a very thankless profession and right. you know we are getting a bad rap for uh, no reason or for uh, some reason uh, but you know these are moments that we live for i think these yeah. are moments that really reinforce at least my faith in <laughs> my decision of yeah. becoming a doctor because uh, it's uh, it's not so much about it is also about the external validation definitely but it is uh, there is nothing compared uh, to the feeling of you know uh, actually uh, giving back life to someone you know somebody who would have died if you had not been there but right. just because you mm-hmm. were that person has a fighting chance and is alive and uh, just remember that uh, and uh, the crew and the passengers on board the vistara flight got delayed by 3 hours, hours yeah. they were really cooperative they were really helpful and uh, it just reinforces my faith in the people also yes there will be one odd guy who will beat up a doctor but for them there are 200 such passengers who are behind you who are waiting yes. definitely definitely yeah. i think uh, everybody including the crew the passengers all of us all five of us and the parents as well you know they gave us the privacy to do our own thing and i really like to thank everybody and uh, hope it motivates the youngsters who want to take up this profession do it uh, it's a good profession you will feel really good about yourself uh, it's a very good feeling to have yeah. that when you save a child and she takes a breath the circulation comes mm-hmm. back and it is something that you have brought alive back